Perfect. So, what I am going to do here is I'm going to generally pull you and see what you think about aromanticism versus romanticism, what you think are certain components of aromanticism and romanticism, that kind of thing. So, any thoughts? What's good? I will take you right there. All right. Yes, you. Um, my name is Carly, and I say aromanticism is where you don't want to be in a relationship. Um, past day friendship. Okay. That is interesting. And we will look at that later. Um, something that isn't platonic. You can have the feelings for somebody that don't quite fit into friendship feelings that are still very platonic feelings. And I think that still fits into a romanticism because there's absolutely nothing romantic about it. And you are very correct about that, which is why I said we were going to discuss this later, because this is not entirely accurate. But yes, we will certainly discuss that later because there are far more components than don't want a friendship, and that's not even entirely true. Okay, anybody else? This side of the board's looking a little there. But, <laughs> yes, you can choose your side. Um, I would say, for a romanticism, I would say you don't experience romantic interaction. That's that is super perfect to put up here. I like it. I love it. And actually, I'll, put up the, I'll get Amy to put up the opposite one, so I'm turning my back to you. Okay, anyone else? Yes? Well, I identify as a We will actually get to that discussion eventually. Right now we're just kind of laying out the difference here, the divide. And I, I do realize that not necessarily everything that's put up here is true, and that's why we will discuss it, break it down, have a brief discussion after we have this little divide here. Yes? Does non-sexual physical attraction fall into romanticism, or does it fall into either? Uh, physical attraction meaning? I crave physical intimacy with you. Okay. But I don't have sex. Is that a romantic thing? I think that's sensual. Right. Sensual attraction. Um, romanticism is. Yeah, yeah, right things. Go for it. <laughs> 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 yes. So, uh, looking specifically at romantic attraction, that is the desire to engage romantically with someone. Desiring to be physically intimate with them is. Not, it, it's somewhat related, but not really. So there are aromantics who can desire to be physically intimate with others. There are aromantics who don't want to be physically intimate, so they're not as good as them. I just wanted to say that like, at the last conference I went to, I met a person who did not identify as asexual, but did identify as aromantic. Mm -hmm. They were, like, they like to have sexual relationships with other people, but don't feel romantically. And that's changed in our society, but it, there are also non asexual very true. And it's not frequent, but it is the case where we can have a divide between sexual orientation and romantic orientation. So 
you can have someone who's heterosexual but also homoromantic, and that can clearly be confusing for some people because they're like, oh, I want to have sex with this person, but I don't want to have a romantic relationship. Um, so there is that divide, and I think with more visibility with asexuality and romantic orientations in general, I think that could actually help a further community with that. Yes? So what you were saying, is that what, like a romance? Sorry? What you said right there before, was that like a romance or something? Could you define the romance? <laughs>
you very much. This is why she just grabs first. first. Yeah, okay, excellent. So we have lots of notes here. Wonderful. Anything else? Come um, again. Yeah, I just wanted to throw in kind of one like, fun little tidbit. Um, we were talking about like, air, between, like air romantic things and romantic things. We were talking about kind of the difference between like, a squish and a crush. Yeah. Um, but the first one is where I know like, if a crush is like the traditional kind of romantic infatuation with someone, then often the term squish is kind of referred to, you know, some people will call it a friend crush. Where it's this, like platonic to where it's like, oh man, you are such a cool person. I want to like hang out with you and like go do fun things with you. And there may be no romantic attraction involved. That's an kind of example of you know like platonic attraction, where it's like I don't want to get a romantic relationship with you or do anything romantic with you, but you're just so cool. Let's like play board games and have movie nights. Thank you. So if anyone missed that, if you hear the term squish, it's just an aromantic version of a crush or what you so wonderfully explained there. Okay, yes, so, anyone else? Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say about this, but I just have to think about um, my best friend who is uh, heterosexual, she was dating my wife for a very long time and he came out as gay, but he still wanted to marry her. Um, and so there was a time in time she was thinking about Crush to describe something that was sexual but not romantic. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, that's that's fair. I guess I'm thinking, and maybe that's the connotation as well, is that crush is also often more associated with um, young younger people, teens and preteens. And I have who do you have a crush on? Well, and the, the yes, no, do you like me? No, yeah. team handed across in grade school. So maybe that does make perfect sense. Hopefully the. Asexual and romantic community, we've had to come up with our own caveats and our own words like squish, but um, the romanticism, it's still very heavily linked to sexuality, so we have a lot of words that are often sexualized, like crush, uh, yeah. for high school and college students at least, can often be very sexual, but not always, and so that's part of why. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking as well, you know, I have a huge crush on Justin Bieber or on mm -hmm. Tom Cruise or on Jennifer Aniston or whoever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it did get to that. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if we have any more questions. Um, the original intent of this whole aromanticism and versus, I guess you could say, romanticism was to show that they're not necessarily so different and so binary. There's a gray scale between aromanticism and romanticism in the same way that there's a gray scale between sexuality and asexuality. And so I think what's important to look at is not necessarily are you is are you aromantic? Oh I'm romantic, you can't be friends. It's more that oh we're both people, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I think we have done a decent job with that. I, I don't know how well this all worked out, but I will let you in on a little secret. I've been super busy with the conference just every minute of the last two days, so I've only planned this for about 10 minutes before. But that's okay, I think it's going really well. So why don't we kind of continue our discussion, because I think we were doing very well there. And yeah, so if you have any questions or any discussion points, I can certainly answer questions. Others in the room have shown that they can certainly answer questions. Yes? Lift romanticism? Lift yes. Now, just to ensure I have the correct term and definition, lift romanticism is being romantically attracted to someone but not desiring uh, reciprocation. Yes. Okay, so lift romanticism, from my understanding, and I'm not the expert at all, so please, if I say something wrong, don't quote me on it. Um, lift romanticism isn't necessarily a romantic orientation in the same way that hetero romanticism or romanticism and bioromanticism are, from what I know, because lift romanticism doesn't specify the gender in which you're romantically attracted to. So, from my understanding, you could be lift romantic or lift lift hetero romantic. I don't know if that's a term, but. <laughs> Anyway, so lift romanticism, from what I've understood, is there are people who say, oh, I really am romantically attracted to you, but as soon as you start to reciprocate those feelings, I'm not really so into that anymore. I think that's that, and it's all very complicated, and I haven't done a lot of looking at that, so that's what I can speak to. Does anyone else have more information there, or shall we move on to a new question? Yeah. Lith romantic tends to be considered one of the gray romantic areas. So in the middle there, along with Demi and Sapio and a bunch of the other ones there. Thank you very much. Okay, so there we are. Okay, anything else? Any questions, discussion points? You had it first. Yeah, I have a question about um, the 
difference between platonic um, relationships and friendships? Absolutely, and I actually was going to go through this one throughout you. So thank you very much. Um, now, even though a romantic people don't experience romantic attraction to others, they can still desire to become part of other relationships that are still as meaningful and all of that as a romantic relationship or a sexual relationship, just without necessarily the romantic part, portion, which words today, which is where we get terms like a platonic relationship, which is very close friends and people may end up living together and that kind of thing, but there's just not necessarily a romantic component to that. And then I'm forgetting the other terms. Do you have other terms? I think it's always friendship. Um, it can be considered friendship, but with what we're specifically teach, or talking about with platonic relationships, I believe, is something maybe deeper than friendship, because you can be friends with someone, but then not have an incredibly close emotional bond, whereas with these platonic relationships, it can become a lot more close. Yes? That is excellent, yeah. I think that's definitely a good thing. Um, okay. I've answered lots for you recently. But I'll get back to you. I'll give someone else a chance. Who else has a question? Okay, I'm going to do it. Welcome to the first question came up with kind of what makes, say, a platonic relationship different than a friendship. I think one thing is this friendship is kind of a really hugely general term that describes all different kinds of relationships. But a lot of the time, what people mean when they say like, a platonic relationship is they mean like an established relationship. So it's kind of the difference between you know like having a crush on someone versus you know like actually like seriously dating them. And then like you know you're dating and you have an agreement like okay this is what our relationship is going to be. This is what our kind of commitment is going to be. This is the level of intimacy that we're expecting to have with each other. Um, and so it's kind of again like so we mentioned commitment is a big thing. You can have very, very low levels of commitment like thinking out some time or to very high levels of commitment, like to live together, we share finances, and we, or like if one of us is gone, we make sure to Skype every two days, or something like that. Also, it can be like a level of intimacy, whether it's someone who's just like, yeah, we do like playing video games together, or someone who's like, I want to allow my soul to you, and like just go for my home with you. And like with any relationship, you can have very low levels of these. And I mean, like when we talk about romantic relationships, we have all these different things, like, are you just dating? Do uh, like, you want to date once? Are you seriously dating? Are you married? Things like that, whereas I feel like I have a ton of relationships, it's just everything becomes friends. And it's like, it's like, well, well, what kind of friends? Like, are they like your work friends you have lunch with sometimes on your work lunch break? Or are they you know, like your best friend who you've been friends with for like 20 years and like you share like all of your like, secrets with? And I feel like this friendship is just like such a big word that it's like, do you really expect us to refer to all of these the same thing? Leaves upon you. <laughs> yeah, um, you have a 
uh, about what's going to happen to you after we die. Who's going to look after you? Who's going to hold your hand at our funeral? Who's going to help you dig the grave if the grave diggers don't show up? So that's the kind of thing. It's also um, like I went to the first session and they're like, yeah, this is a fairly new thing. No kidding. Okay, we're the further generation up, so we're trying to look after our dying parents and our, our spouses aren't looking so good these days either. Um, and then they want us to work with this, all this new terminology that you throw at us, and it's really important to you. And we're just trying to. Like, okay, where's the bill? What do I do that? What did you say? You signed me up to go to 24 muffins tomorrow? Oh, and you're asexual. Okay, that's fine, dear. That's <laughs> okay. So, um, feed it to us, please. Oh, yeah. Slowly. <laughs> Thank you. Okay? Because you're like, oh, you have to know this about me because you're the most important person in my life. Well, yes, but actually, that was just like, sometimes it's too much information, and you have to give it to us slowly. And when we see that you're doing well and that you're thriving, we will calm down. But we have to see you thriving. <laughs> you can't just be denying and telling us that everything's okay and then you're like having a meltdown at midnight the next week about something because we're going to see if they're not okay. Of course they're not okay. Um, so just you have to show us that you're doing well. And if you're not doing well, don't start hiding it because it'll make us worry more because we know you better than you think we do. Even if we don't understand all these words you use, and I don't understand what's on that board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, like, we, we kind of, we actually, we, we knew you before you were born, so we love you dearly, but we don't always get it. But you have to decide what's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, start with the big ideas first. And then lead your way down to the finer details that we really need to know. And don't give us all the stuff we don't need to know. But we want to know that you're doing that. Um, and the way you can position that to us, if I could just give some more advice, nobody else is saying that. Okay, can I take it more time? Is um, show us that you're like that you're happy, because our great fear, at least my great fear, is. What, like, okay, intimacy. So, like, what, you're, you're asexual, there's one in a hundred, 50% of them are men, so are they on the table or off the table? Okay, and how are you going to know, and how do you know that people aren't just faking it because they like you and they figure they can fix you later? So, we're worried about all these things that can go wrong. The only really good thing about it is that when we're really happy that you're never going to come home pregnant. <laughs> talk today about it. it was a process and I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, so are we. So but we need way more time. I'm going through school and therefore I can learn things and that I don't have any distractions there. It's her biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Going to school and learning things. There's no distraction or relationship. Oh yeah it's great. We don't have a boy for drama. You're not coming home at twelve o'clock midnight ready to smash your wrist about that stupid guy that we never like to that's the good news. Yeah, but then on the other hand, we're kind of like, but there's no grandchildren you're coming on here. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't adopt, even if you buy one, you're going to adopt later when you're financially secure. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 A couple of things that were said there, because I know some people might not necessarily agree with it or anything. Um, I think it's important to realize that even if you don't have a romantic partner, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to die alone because you can develop these close friendships and that kind of thing. And there's nothing intrinsically wrong with not having a romantic partner. Uh, there's many people who have these romantic or sexual relationships who aren't necessarily happy with their relationships. So I think it's more on a case-by-case -case basis and not just because you're aromantic, you're probably going to die alone. So I think it's, it's um, we shouldn't really concern ourselves about, oh, are you going to be in a relationship or not, as much as are you going to be happy for that kind of thing. Uh, did we have comments? Do you have a comment? And I think everybody needs to realize that everybody has a different definition of, of, of meaningful of meaningful life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, the norm is, you know, leaving children behind as your legacy. But, you know, if, if you're not going to have children, and you might be in a lifelong relationship with a really good friend, uh, maybe in a community, um, maybe your legacy is going to be something different. We're going to discover some medical breakthrough or whatever the case may be, but as long as, yes, as long as your definitions of a meaningful life, um, you know, you, you're reaching that, you've got that, and then you're happy. That's basically, I think, what most parents want for their children. Yeah, just right. Yeah, um, I just want to mention that, like, what if you're not happy with the What is it that's going to define your life and what is it that's going to make you 
have it. What does it have? Yeah. So I mean, like, it's a separate thing. So to say that you know we seem right and and then we'll accept that it's okay is a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, kind of one, one thing that I've run into um, over and over and over again, and I think part of it ties back to this idea that everybody needs to be free to define what happiness is for themselves and what is right for themselves. But the on idea behind that is that isn't there and really seen in society. Society has some base expectations on what is and isn't a romantic relationship and what even the relationship word means if you were to try to bring it up to somebody. And if you have something that is a feeling towards a person but it isn't romantic, even if you would try to describe that, it becomes difficult to do because you then have to try to describe what you're going for out with the trappings of all the baggage of the rest of the language we currently have. I think that makes something that's kind of difficult to navigate, and I'm not even sure if there's an easy way to deal with it, but that makes for where you've got people who might be a romantic that might want to find somebody who feels like they can't because they're going to be misunderstood or it might mess up a friendship that's already existing. And, but there's not good language that the other person would understand to know where they're coming from. And I think that trying to get something out there where so we could just all communicate on the same level between whether we're romantic or aromantic or asexual or, ace or, or not asexual would be something to look to in the future. Because in my experience, the aromantic part is actually harder to describe than the asexual part of my orientation. Or another term, I guess. I'm not sure how familiar with this, but apparently, like, I'm not sure what the right term is, but sexual, or not sexual, a selective uh, romanticism or selective sexuality where people are not necessarily interested in the male and the female and the, the trans or whatever, but they're interested in an in individual. And even though like, it's um, like it is someone else interested in, totally they're interested in. But they're not interested in males or females, right? It's very selective. And I thought that was a really weird thing to be. I was, I guess, it's a lot who they are. Yeah. Wouldn't that be more like an romantic or pansexual? Or 